Now in this video we're going to talk about ellipses. Now again, just like the section on parabolas, there's a lot of writing in here, so I expect you to read the first page into the second page. We'll start off by talking about the definition of an ellipse. Now an ellipse is a set of all points in a plane whose distances from two fixed points in the plane have a constant sum. The fixed points are the foci of the ellipse. The line through the foci is the focal axis. The point on the focal axis midway between the foci is the center. The points where the ellipse intersects its axis are the vertices of the ellipse. So again, we're gonna, we have two, we have a vertex and a vertex, vertex on the left, vertex on the right. Plural will be vertice. Focus on the left, focus on the right. Plural would be foci. Now again, there's all this different writing, and it gets this down to the equation x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. Now there's different parts to this, as we'll see in just a moment. But the big thing we need to remember, foci, just like with parabolas, the focus is designated by letter C. And we'll get into that in just a little bit. Now, x squared plus over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. That's the standard form. So you want to get all your equations into the standard form. Now, as with circles and parabolas, a line segment with endpoints on an ellipse is a chord of the ellipse. The chord line on a focal axis is the major axis of the ellipse. The chord through the center perpendicular to the focal axis is the minor axis. Major axis length is 2a, minor axis length is 2b. The number A, which is half of the major axis, is a semi-major axis, and B is the semi-minor axis. Again, we'll get through this in just a little bit. Then we do have some pictures here that we need to decipher. Now, we are going to have a Pythagorean relationship when we're talking about ellipses. The big relationship that we're going to see here is b squared plus c squared is equal to a squared. That will go for both of these. That will go for both of these. You can see the Pythagorean relationship right on the pictures. So the distance from the center to one of the foci is c. The length of the semi-minor axis is b. The distance between those, actually the length of A here, which is a hypotenuse for a right triangle, is actually the length of the, of the semi-major axis, or half the major axis. And again, like we had with parabolas, we'll have a chart here with ellipses with center 0, 0, and we'll also have a center HK. Now the standard equations are there. One thing you should notice, the A value is underneath the X in the left side of the chart and underneath the y on the right side of the chart. Look at the focal axis. That will tell you which way your ellipse is not really opening but extending. So let's get into it. Now we need to put this in standard form, which means we need a 1 on the right side. So we're going to divide by 36. Everything in here divide by 36 which means 1x squared, 4 divided by 36 is 1 9, with y squared over 4, and that equals 1. Now, our largest number here, this is a squared, so a squared is 9, which means a is 3. b squared is 4, which means b is 2. Now, because that's the case, and we know that a squared equals b squared plus c squared. That means 3 squared equals 2 squared plus c squared. So 9 minus 4, this will be c squared, which means c, will be the square root of 5. So now that we know our a and our b, we know our c value, we can actually come up with the vertices and the foci. 
Now, because the A value is underneath x squared, we're going to use a left-hand chart. Our foci is plus or minus C. Our vertices are plus or minus A0. So vertices, plus or minus A0. So it'll be plus or minus 3, 0. Our foci, plus or minus square root of 5, 0. And there you have it. So it's find the vertices and foci of the ellipse. There you have it. Now for letter B, we're going to divide everything by 112, which means we'll have x squared over 16 plus y squared over 7, and that will equal 1. That means a squared equals 16, which means a is 4. b squared is 7, which means b is a square of 7. c squared is actually equal to a squared minus b squared. You're doing a little manipulations in our head, which means c will be square root of 16 minus 7, or square root of 9, which is 3. Now our vertices, because the a value is under x, our vertices will be plus or minus a0. Our foci, because again a is underneath the x squared, will be plus or minus 3, 0. Now, an ellipse centered at the origin with its focal axis on a coordinate axis is symmetric with respect to the origin and both coordinate axes. Such an ellipse can be sketched by first drawing a guiding rectangle centered at the origin with sides parallel to the coordinate axis and then sketching the ellipse inside the rectangle as shown. So, how to sketch the ellipse x squared plus over a squared plus y squared or b squared equals 1. This will come in handy when you start your project for chapter 8. So first, sketch line segments at x equals plus or minus a and y equals plus or minus b. Those are going to be vertical and horizontal lines. Complete the rectangle they determine. Now inscribe an ellipse that is tangent to the rectangle of plus or minus a0 and 0 plus or minus b. That's all you have to do. That will work really anywhere as long as your center you know where your center is, go plus a, minus a, plus b, minus b. Now, if we wish to graph an ellipse using a grapher, we need to solve for the equation of the ellipse for y. So make sure you take out your grapher. Now, in example two, we need to find an equation, then graph it. So let's find this equation. So it says foci is 0 and then plus or minus 3. That means your c value is 3. Now it also says your minor axis length is 4. That means 2b is equal to 4, which means b is equal to 2. Now using your Pythagorean relationship, a squared will equal 2 squared plus 3 squared, which means a squared will equal 4 plus 9, which is 13 which means a will be the square root of 13. So now we have an a value, we have a b value. Your center is actually going to be at 0, 0. That means my equation, because the minor axis length is 4, both sides is 0, 3, and 0, negative 3, your equation will be, if we look back at our chart here, because it's 0 plus or minus c, that means a squared will be underneath y squared. That's the big thing here. You've got to know where your foci are. So a squared will be underneath y squared. So y squared over 13 plus x squared over 4 equals 1. Now, if I need to, I need to solve this for y squared, that means y squared over 13 with 1 minus x squared over 4. That means y squared will equal 13 
times 1 minus x squared over 4, which means y will equal plus or minus square root of 13 times 1 minus x squared over 4. So here's your equations that you need to put into your calculator. So we we'll have a positive square root of 13 times 1 minus x squared divided by 4. And negative square root of 13 So there's your parabola. Now moving on to example B, again, your A squared is 36, which means A will be 6. B squared is 16, which means B will be 4. That means C squared will equal A squared minus B squared, which means C will be square root of 36 minus 16, which is the square root of 20, which means C will be 2 times the square root of 5. So now, now that you found those, let's solve this thing for y squared. That means y squared over 16 equals 1 minus x squared over 36. That means y squared equals 16 times 1 minus x squared over 36, which means y will equal the plus or minus 16 times 1 over x, or 1 minus x squared over 36. Now again, you should notice that we can't take the square root of 16. You can do that if you want to, but you really don't have to. Now putting these equations in, we'll have the square root of 16 times 1 minus x squared over 36, and a negative square root of that. There's the top half of your ellipse, and there's the bottom half of your ellipse. Now again, you probably didn't have to find A, B, and C, but again, that's just very good practice, but it will help us.